Good morning, everybody. How you guys doing? Good morning. Welcome to all of our visitors this morning. Glad to see you guys. You guys ready to worship? Let's stand. Let's do it. Let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what the Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Sing it out, church. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. And I know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things. God, you do great things. Here we go. Oh, he holds a heaven. You conquer the grave, you free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, I say, for your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great. Above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. Right, church, you got it, sing it out. Done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You have done great things. Oh God, you do great things. I will sing forever of your love come down with my hands to heaven shout your praises loud I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out I will sing forever of your love come down oh 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 I once was blind, I could not see His chains of sin had shackled me But God in heaven heard my plea For Jesus, Jesus, rescue me For Jesus, Jesus, rescue me I will sing, I will sing forever of your love come down 
with my hands to heaven, shout your praises now. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I will sing forever of your love come down. Oh, 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 and hope eternal won't let go. My daddy raised at Calvary. Why? Cause Jesus, Jesus, rescued me. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, rescued me. I will sing forever of your love. Come down with my hands to heaven. Shout your praises. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me. I will sing forever of your love come down. Oh, 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 oh. Well, there's a hope beyond the sky. A song we'll sing for all of time. The grave is empty. I am free. Jesus, Jesus, rescue me. Here we go. I will sing. I will sing forever of your love come. I will sing forever. I will sing forever. I will sing forever of your love come down. I will sing forever of your love come down. Oh, 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 Father God, we thank you so much for this morning. May you be glorified and praised. Stripes. 
over sin is overcome it is finished it is done by your stripes i live by your death i live the power of sin is overcome it is finished it is done by your stripes i live by your death i live the power of sin is overcome it is finished it is done by your stripes i live by your death i live power of sin is overcome it is finished hallelujah thank you jesus God, we thank you so much for the cross. Jesus, may you be praised this morning. May you be lifted high. Some 2,000 years ago, you thought of us and of my sin. All the stupid things that I've done, even since coming to know you, Jesus, the things that I've stumbled over. But Father God, I know that I know that I know when I come to you and I seek forgiveness, it's granted freely. You removed my sins from me as far as the east is from the west. And you do that to everybody this morning who comes to you believing upon your son in the name of Jesus and confessing their sins, Father. Father, I know there are people in the the building this morning that have addictions. Father, we give those to you this morning. Father, there are arguments on the way to church this morning. We give you those this morning, Father, so that we can be in perfect peace as we sit under your teaching this morning, Father. Father, there are hidden sins that Even husbands and wives don't know of each other, Father. We give them to you this morning. May they be revealed in your light and in your time and be forgiven, Father God. May relationships be mended and healed, Father God. The the ones that are struggling this morning, may healing happen because of the name of Jesus and because of our surrender to you this morning. And Father God, we do surrender. Father, I'm nothing without you. I've seen it time and time again, Father, where I chase the things of this world and I'm so dissatisfied. In fact, I'm imprisoned again in shame and the cycle of destruction. Father God, I don't want that. Nobody here wants it this morning. We give you everything this morning, the praise, the glory. All the skeletons in our closet, Father God, you know they're there. Take them from us. In your light, might we be healed this morning. Father, for those who can't be here this morning, I know we have a lot of regular attenders who aren't here this morning, Father, because of illness. Maybe they're watching online this morning, Father God. Wherever they're at, your healing hand be upon them, Father. May they feel blessed at this moment. May they feel peace and comfort in you. For those that are working this morning, Father God, once again, your comfort over them. I know that they'd much rather be here, but Father God, we thank you for the work that you provide us so that we can sustain our families here on this earth. And Father, we'd ask that you would Right now, we want to lift up Isaiah to you, Father, as he brings the message this morning. He wants to deliver an accurate message based on your word. He doesn't want anything from his own heart, from his, from his, own, his own mind, Father, but truly from your heart and from your wisdom. Would you speak through him this morning through the power of the Holy Spirit that, so that we can walk away changed people, Father God? Because I know your words cut through barrel and bone and they get barrel, marrow and bone and they get right down to the, to the deepest, darkest parts of me, Father. We love you, Father. We worship you. And in Jesus' name, the church said, amen. Amen. All right, take just a couple of seconds. Turn around, wave, say hi to somebody you haven't said hi to yet.
Isn't it incredible that a gospel opportunity can fit in your hands? It's called an Operation Christmas Child shoebox, and it's filled with fun toys, hygiene items, school supplies, and a personal message. But really, it's much more than that. It's a tangible expression of God's love to introduce Jesus Christ. Churches just like this, when they pack shoeboxes, have a significant gospel impact around the world. In the beginning, people from this village, they were hard-hearted to receive the gospel. The turning point was when we distributed gift boxes. I saw a great impact. After the distribution, many of children gave their life to Jesus and started with the greatest journey. The greatest journey is so impactful because it's the word of God. I've seen Jesus putting hope upon the children. God is doing a great work. If you want something as a pastor where your people can get involved in ministry, something that has maximum impact in the worldwide kingdom of Christ, I mean, what better thing could you do than be involved in Operation Christmas Child? To me, it's a no-brainer. I have seen firsthand how a shoebox is an opportunity and a tool that opens the door to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. These boxes open kids' hearts to the fact that there's people all over the world that love them, and what it shows them ultimately is that there's a God that loves them. This is one of many shoebox distributions we've been doing on the nation of Kiribati. We have brought tens of thousands of shoebox gifts, and even though it's August, uh, it's Christmas for these children. Scripture tells us, go throughout all ends of the earth and bring the good news of Jesus Christ to make fishers of men. That's what we've been called to do. And that's what I love about Operation Christmas Child. It knows no borders and knows no boundaries. It's all about sharing the name of Jesus Christ. Each year, around 11 million gospel opportunities are shared in over 120 countries. And more than 4 million children enroll in the greatest journey and learn to be disciples. The gospel is truly going to the ends of the earth. Your local church is having a massive impact, all because of the simple act of packing a shoebox. These shoebox gifts create an opportunity for entire congregations to fulfill the Great Commission. With every shoebox you pack, your church is empowering and training churches globally to share the gospel. This is truly the Great Commission in action. See if we can get this to work. There we go. Good morning. How's everybody doing? doing good. All right. Man, guys, join us next Saturday, October 2nd at 8.30 here at the church for food, fellowship, and the study of God's Word. We meet every first Saturday of each month, so if you do not have this marked down on your calendars, put it on there. We look forward to seeing you. Amen. Ladies, traveling she shed. Ladies, don't forget that the Traveling She Shed will be meeting Saturday, October 9th from 10 to noon here at the church. There is a sign-up in the foyer. This is a time of fellowship, studying God's Word, and doing a craft. We meet every second Saturday of each month, so ladies, mark it on your calendar. Ladies, study. Ladies will be joining Beth and Melissa Moore for a six-week deep dive into Paul's captivating letters to the Galatians. Come to know the letter's original recipients. Study its original context and embrace its timeless relevance. Discover or perhaps rediscover what makes the gospel of Jesus Christ revolutionary to those who choose to believe. Find out how everything has changed now that faith has come. We will meet here at the church Thursday, October 7th from 6 to 8 p.m. Sign-ups are in the foyer. Last but not least, Light in the Darkness Halloween Outreach. 
What an awesome ministry. We are planning on being a light in the darkness during Halloween by setting up tents with coffee, cocoa, and candy for the community. This has been an awesome way to show the community that the church isn't afraid of being seen on Halloween and provides a safe place for families to visit and warm up throughout the night. There will be a quick meeting next Sunday, October 3rd, for anyone interested in helping with this outreach. I have personally helped out with that, and it is awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you. Being a bugger. Being a bugger. Being a bugger. Good morning. Wouldn't you figure? Enemy's trying to steal my joy. It's not going to work. Not going to work. So if you're a visitor here today, we are honored and humbled. I know many of you come out and support Pastor Isaiah, um, and we are honored to have you all here. If you did not, behind this wall, the zigzag wall here is the entrance to our coffee shop. If you want a refreshment, we'd offer you a cup of cold water, but sometimes a trip of mocha or, you know, <laughs> chai tea or a blended drink is, is way better than a cup of cold water. So... Uh, please go get something on us. It's our little way of saying thank you for being here today, um, and we're honored to have you all here with us. Um, I want to call out a group of ladies. You didn't expect this. I didn't. But we want to thank Teen Challenge Montana to be here this morning. So thank you all for being here and blessing us. Uh, I have the honor of introducing a friend and a brother in Christ. Um, before I do, I just, you know, how many of us look at our past and we cringe but we see where God's moving us and taking us today, yeah. right? And it's a good thing. You know, there was a guy in the Bible, you might know him. He, uh, he had zeal for the Lord, and he did so, and he persecuted Christians. In fact, he held the cloaks of the guys that stoned the first martyr in Christianity. He was tenacious, and, and as you read through, the, through Paul's epistles, you read about a zeal for the Lord that is immeasurable. And, and even before he was saved, he was on fire doing what he thought was the right thing to do. And, and it's one of those things where he didn't lose his zeal. It just shifted. He went from, from killing Christians to being the, one of the most powerful Christians that have walked this earth. And so uh, Brother Isaiah has come from a past. He had a zeal. You got to read his book. There was a zeal to run with a devil. And that zeal has not left. Well, the purpose left, but the zeal has not. And now he runs harder for heaven than he did for the devil. And so I want you to welcome my brother, Pastor Isaiah. Thank you for being here with us. We're honored to have you, brother. What up, fam? Yo. Much love. I appreciate everyone that came out to support the gangster preacher, King Jesus. We, that's what we rep. And um, I'm excited to be here, man. I think that's awesome that you guys are, are doing that for, for Halloween. We actually have an event ourselves, the Gangster for Jesus, on October 31st. It's going to be amazing, fam. So I'm glad to see all you guys here, man, and, and come on support. Uh, before I start and I pray and I get into the word, I just, I wanted to invite a few people up just to um, talk a little bit about my book. I, I did um, an event for Hellfest in, um, where was it? Where was it, Chris? Helena. 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 Okay, there you go. <laughs> and um, so I almost sold all my books out, but you could get my book on Amazon too. I think we might have like 15, 20 left. Um, it's called From the Streets to the Throne by Zeb Blancas, and it's my autobiography. But I was going to call Broken Chains up here, man. They're one of the people I want to bring up. And just so they could give a little bit of testimony, you know, um, about, I guess, my ministry and really the, the book. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm, uh, my name is Chris. I go by uh, Crazy 2.0. I'm a gospel hip-hop artist with uh, my cousin Brian here. Uh, we got the honor of meeting Pastor Isaiah um, in 2020 at Hellfest in Missoula. That was the first time he had come up. And, uh, and we, we got his book before that. He had sent him to your cousin, right? And uh, she had given him to us at a... To Brandon, yeah. She had, and they had given him to us at a... Um, a Bible study, a home group that we were doing, and uh, man, to read this guy's uh, testimony in his his autobiography, um, like I idolized 
the type of people uh, that he was when I was when I was a kid. Like I looked I looked up to the to the gang life and fantasized about being a drug lord and and uh, you know reading this book and seeing that he had come from a darker place than I had even come because I I, I got involved, but I, I was nowhere near uh, the amount of things that he went through. Um, so to see God use uh, this man's life and, and change it gave me hope, you know, and, uh, and really encouraged me. And, and then to see him um, in person um, on the streets ministering to people um, is just an incredible honor. It's an incredible um, testimony and a, a must read. <laughs> Amen to that. My name is Brian. Uh, we're cousins. Um, we did a song for Isaiah's book, uh, From the Streets to the Throne, and uh, it was just something that, man, I was, I was happy. He wanted, he wanted uh, he's like, man, you guys should do a song for my book, and I'm like, man, that's a good idea. Let's do it. And uh, Streets to the Throne, again, we, we came from a life of, uh, you know, drugs, alcohol, uh, you know, wanting to be gangsters, you know, of course, we're in Montana. I don't know how gangster you get in Montana, but... <laughs> But uh, <laughs> we get as, we got as gangsters as we could, I guess, back in the day. And uh, man, but but then we was living for the streets, and today we we're gangsters for Jesus, and uh, that that's that's where it's at. Um, uh, as for his book, I mean, I mean, I've heard his life story so many times, but if you haven't heard it, and uh, you need to get one of them books. Um, he, he tells it over and over again, and, and it's, man, it's, he always has a little bit more to share, something that God's doing in there, and what he's done in his past, but, but coming into uh, a life of Christ, you know, and uh, man, I'm just grateful he's here. We got to spend a day with him, man, amazing man of God, and I just, uh, not only Isaiah, man, let's, let's give it up, because today's all about uh, getting to know Jesus and, and what he does in our lives, so... All right, so I was going to tell Rainbow to come up here, say what she got out of it, because I, I had called, um, or someone called me, right, from Teen Challenge, and, and she was there. It was the first time I meet her, but she was telling me how much the book impacted her life, so I just wanted to give her a little bit of testimony and see, see how, what she got out of it. <laughs> Praise God, huh? But um, my first week at Adult Teen Challenge, one of my homegirls, I was chopping it up with her, and she recommended the book to me, so... Yeah, after putting down my Bible at nighttime, I would pick up his book and read it. And it gave me hope that, you know, you're not too far gone to, you know, be saved. And I'm very thankful and grateful to have many brothers and sisters and brothers in Christ. And, you know, I'm from a reservation. And, you know, what was stated up here, you know, there ain't no gangs in Montana. <laughs> but um, short and sweet, all my testimony, you know, I grew up in that lifestyle, too. And by the grace of God, I'm still alive here today. Yeah. And I want to give a shout out to my sisters in Christ here, Adult Teen Challenge. What's up? <laughs> Love you, ladies. And I'm very thankful and grateful to be here. Amen. And meet you and giving all the glory to God. Amen. Amen. And, and I think Chuck's talking about it anyways at the end, so I'll leave it at that. So let's pray and let's get into some word. Amen. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for, for blessing this service, Father, for opening spiritual eyes, Father, for opening spiritual ears, Father, unto heaven to hear your voice, God. Because, Lord, you know that many people, many believers, many people in the world don't know your voice. And so I pray, Father, that today that they open those spiritual ears, God, and that they get something from heaven, Father, a piece of heaven here on earth. And I thank you, Father, what you're going to do. I thank you for depositing word, Father, in people's minds, spirit, body, and souls. And that they come to know you, King Jesus, Father, as Lord and Savior today. Or, or get reacquainted with you. And so I give you all honor and glory, Father. I thank you for using me, Father. Your Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. And we just thank you, Father, for what you're going to do here. It's not about me. It's not about anyone. It's about you. And so I'm grateful, Father, that, that you flow through us, that you can use messed up people like us to bring you glory. 
And I'm just thankful, Father, that you're doing everything that you do, not just in my life, but a lot of other believers' lives, Father, that are in this world, Father, putting it down for you for King Jesus. So I'm thankful, for God. Flow here, Father, today in this service. Father, I thank you for your spirit coming, Father, and it being all you and none of me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen fam. So look, let's go to um, Nehemiah 2. 17 through 20, we're going to start there. And I'm going to start by, by, by saying this, right? When you read this, I, I, would, I would really um, recommend that you read everything because I'm just giving you bits and pieces. But this is talking about how destruction came to their land, right? And destruction is coming to this world right now. There's a lot of um, stuff going on. Where demonic powers and the enemy, our enemy, Lucifer, is really controlling things and dominating things. And I believe it's time for true soldiers to rise up in the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. And so I'm going to start here in verse 17. So just so you know, this land is in ruins. The walls have been knocked down. Stuff is not good for these people right now. And Nehemiah was one man that was bold enough. To take a stand against these people in these times, these wicked, you know, evil people in these times, his enemies, right? And stand for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I believe um, a lot of times we think, what can we do as, as one person, as one man, as one woman? And I came here today to tell you that we can do a lot through one man or one woman. If you look in the Bible, I'm gonna say this before I start, everything that happens. That's a great move of God comes through one man or one woman in this Bible. It doesn't start with an army. It doesn't start with a, with a uh, you know, like we're back, back here praying right now for the servant and stuff. Me, Chuck, and his team, right? It doesn't start with a board, with an organization. It starts with one man or one woman standing up for what they believe and being bold in their beliefs. Amen? So I'm going to start here in verse 17. It says, then I said to them. You see the trouble we are in? Jerusalem lies in ruins, and its gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, and we will no longer be in disgrace. I also told them about the gracious hand of my God upon me and what the king said to me. They replied, let us start rebuilding. So they began the good work. But when Sanballat San and the Horonite, Tobiah and Ammonite official and Geshem, the Arab, heard about it. They, were, they mocked us and ridiculed us. What is this you are doing, they asked. Are you rebelling against the king? I answered them by saying, the God of heaven will give us success. We, his servants, will start rebuilding. But as for you, you will have no share in Jerusalem or any claim or any historic right to it. Let me tell you something, family of God. When it comes to great leaders and great men of God, or just men of God in general, right? You should be backing them. If you ain't going to do what they're doing, look, I go lots of places. Where I come from, there's little, you see little seven-year-olds with heroin tracks on their arms. When I go preaching in Juarez, Mexico, because I'm from El Paso, Texas, Juarez, Mexico area, right? You'll see sometimes chopped heads on the floor. You'll see bodies hanging from bridges. You'll see cops' heads on stakes, right? Most people would fear that. But for me, for true soldiers, it excites us because we know that we're truly being a light in darkness, not a light in light. So many times people want to be light in light, family of God. And, 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 and what do I mean by that, right? By being a light here in the church building in the four walls after the preacher or speaker or someone else has preached or taught or, 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 or gave a sermon, right? And, and so a lot of times you'll see this. They want to be light in light. Right? Not lights in darkness. They want to preach to someone after the pastor preached to them. But God didn't call us to be on vacation. Right? He called us to be a light in darkness. He called us to be bold. Right? And so right here it says, but as for you, I have no share in Jerusalem or any claim or historic right to it. You know, a lot of times we don't do our job. Look, if you don't want to do stuff that we do, whether it is having a church. Look, I don't know how much longer that, that that's going to be, you know, legal. That's right. Right. 
But we got to learn some of this stuff. Because if churches do shut down, we're going to go back to being the underground church. And we have to know who we are in God's kingdom. You know, that's one thing I asked one of the leaders the other day, my brother back here. What's your purpose? What's your call in your life? Right? And, and he was telling me. I said, that's good, bro. A lot of people don't know their purpose in God's kingdom. They don't know their purpose in this life. They don't know their calling. Right? And it's sad. But look, if you're not going to do this stuff that we're doing, then fund it. But do something. Don't just go to church once a week every Sunday. Go home and do nothing for the kingdom of God. Because there is true soldiers out here still doing this. And that we ain't taking this as a joke. I got to tell you guys, man, I preach so much. And, and, and I believe in, in, in the King of Kings and Lord of Lords so much. That I'll go sometimes three months preaching nonstop. And my body will kind of break down. I'll be shaking, having a fever. My wife will say, you need to relax a day. And I'll relax. But why does it have to be like that with us? With certain few that are, that are really pushing this gospel. When others can be helping, right? Like Moses, when his hands were up and his, and his hands were falling, you know, the people were holding his hands up to keep, you know, winning the battle. I, I don't understand a lot of things that go on, fam. Let's go to Nehemiah 4, 4 to 20. It's going to get better and better, right? So it says here, hear us, O God, for we are despised. Turn the insults back on their heads. Give them over as plunder in a land of captivity. Do not cover up their guilt or blot out their sins for your sight, from your sight. For they have been throwing insults in the face of the builders, right? And let me tell you something. A lot of people are not going to be happy when you're building the kingdom of God here on this earth. Right now, you know why I put Gangs for Jesus as my, as my ministry name? Because we are the gangs for Jesus now. We are the oddballs, the people that look at, that, that say, oh, these are outcasts. These people are crazy. That's us now. If you're standing for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords in these days, we're the gangsters for Jesus. We're the outcasts, the ones that no one thinks can do anything. Right? That's the truth. But the devil ain't going to be happy, fam. When you guys are doing stuff and you guys are starting to get closer to God and you start doing things and shifting your life and shifting atmospheres where, where, wherever you go, the devil ain't going to sit back and clap and say, good job. He's going to attack you. And he's going to want to break you. But there has to be some true soldiers standing up in these end times that truly love God and that truly stand on this word and that truly have a great foundation under them and that know who they are in the kingdom. Right? So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height, for the people worked with all their heart. But when Sanballat, Tobiah, and Arabs, and Ammonites, and the men of Ashad heard that the repairs to Jerusalem walls had gone ahead, and that the gaps were being closed, they were very angry. It's like I said, fam, if you're going to start building, you're going to start believing, you're going to start backing your pastor, which you should, Right? The, 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 the enemy isn't going to be happy. The enemy is happy when you do what I said earlier. You go to church, then go home, then do nothing. He ain't going to mess with you too much. And you're going to think everything's all good, but it ain't. There's a dying world out here that need the truth, that need gospel. Amen. That don't need ear tickling anymore. The church is crumbling, family of God. If you guys haven't noticed, I preach all over the place, right? But if you haven't noticed, the church is crumbling just with this coronavirus. And people are scared. People are putting more faith in their mass than they are in the king of kings and lord of lords. Worldwide. When are we going to stand up? When are true soldiers going to stand up and rise? And be who we're called to be. And not be just relaxed and, and act like everything's all good. And that everything's going to get better. It's not. Stuff's getting worse and worse. Right? And it says, they all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it. But we prayed to our God and posted a guard day by day and by night to meet this threat. Watchmen, family of God. Watchmen is what we need in the kingdom of God. Where's all the watchmen at nowadays? There's not many anymore. 
but there's still some. And we're trying to tell you guys that stuff is crazy. I, you know, I see w when I drive around here and all that, I see it looking all pretty, right? Deer running around and, and, and nice green grass and all that. It's not like that everywhere. I preach in places like Chicago, L.A., like where I'm from, El Paso, Juarez, Mexico. It's not like that. There's people dying up out there. There's people that are getting hurt. There's people that are getting killed. And where's the church at? Inside the four walls, being light and light. Instead of lights and darkness. Right? Come on. It's the truth. So it says here, meanwhile, the people in Judah said, the strength of our laborers is giving out. And there is so much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. Also, our enemies said, before they know it or see us, we will be right there among them and will kill them and put the end to a work. Then the Jews who lived near them came and told them ten times over, wherever you turn, they will attack us. Therefore, I stationed some of my people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by families with their swords, spears, and bows. After I looked things over, I stood up and said, do not be afraid of them. Look, fam, I'm telling you, do not be afraid of them, of this world, of this enemy that we have, because we know that we win. In this Bible, when we stand for the king, we win. We don't have to be afraid. As a matter of fact, you should make the devil afraid and all these demons afraid and these people out here afraid. When you wake up every day, the enemy should, should know that a soldier's up, a warrior's up. Amen. To fight this fight, this good fight of faith. You know where you get up out of bed. And that the enemy could hear your armor and, and, and it clank and shake and, shake and all that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He should hear your armor when you get up. But the truth is, how, how many people are truly soldiering up? How is the devil hearing you? Or what are you asking for God? What are you asking from God? Because a lot of times it's like an ATM card. We just want what he can give us. But have you asked God what, what he wants you to do? What your purpose is? What you're supposed to be doing out here? To let people know about our Lord and Savior? Many people ain't doing that, family of God. Right? Many people are, want to be ear ticklers nowadays. They don't want to speak no truth to you. They don't want it to hit you. Like it says in the Bible, the Bible says that's a sword, that it, that it hits you. Right? And splits even between soul and marrow and all that. So, so why not preach truth? Why not let people know about your king? Why not let people know what the king has done for you? It says in the Bible that we overcome with our testimonies. Amen. I didn't come from the lifestyle I came from. And, and from everything I've been through. To be some, some, some little sissy in church. <laughs> right? Yeah. We need a soldier up. We need to let this world know that, that, that who we are and that we're putting it down for King Jesus. Amen. Right? Yes. It's the truth. It says this, I stood up and said to the nobles and officials and the rest of the people, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your brothers and your sons and your daughters and your wives and your homes. Fight, right? Many people are letting the devil steal families. Enter your family. Crumble your family. Look, fam, if there's anything to fight for in these end times, it's that. It's your brothers, your sisters, your fathers, your daughters, your families. How are we going to be out here preaching this gospel to all these people and being a light and crowds coming or whatever? But your own family is going to hell. I came to make you think today. Everywhere I preach, you know, I, I, I could hear a pin drop. But I didn't come to tickle your ears today and this morning. I came to make you think and shift things for God's glory. The church needs that nowadays, right? It says, when our, our enemies had heard that we were aware of their plot and that God had frustrated it, we all returned to the wall, each to his own work. From that day on, half of my men did the work, while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows, and armor. 
the officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah who were building the wall. Those who carried materials did their work with one hand and held a weapon in the other. Come on, family of God. When, when did this stop? When did this stop? We should have our, our, our sword, our Bible in one hand and be fighting with the other, with the enemies of God's kingdom. When, when did we become so relaxed? When did stuff shift from the times of the apostles and all the greats to the way the church is nowadays? Crumbling, dying, scared, scared of sickness, scared of, oh, am I going to die like this? Am I going to die like that? Come on, fam. You know, I, I was telling the, the leadership and, and Pastor Chuck yesterday or the day before. I think it was yesterday. Day before. Day before. <laughs> okay, look. I was telling them. You know, I, 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 had, I had COVID. I almost died. And, and, and I remember um, when we were preaching, my wife, um, well, I think we were, we were going back. We are in Utah or something like that. And she says, hey, um, you want to go? I'll tell you. I said, man, I'm exhausted. I didn't even know I had COVID. And actually, I got it out here in Montana. Right? <laughs> and, and, and so I was like, um, I'm just exhausted. I could taste. I could smell. I didn't, I didn't know what was going on. I was eating snow at Yellowstone. I thought I was just sick from eating so much snow because I don't see snow a lot where I come from. Right? <laughs> So I told her, hey, get, get this hotel. And so, so we get to a hotel, and I, and I fall on the bed on my face. And immediately, I had a vision. And God was taking me through dimensions. And he was saying, look, this is the first dimension. This is the second one. This is the third one. And then I was in the fourth, which is a spiritual realm, right? And, and the devil was telling me, I'm going to kill you. And he had his hair slicked back. He had um, colored eyes. He had light skin. He had this beautiful pinstripe suit. And I could see how he was going to, you know, really bamboozle the whole world. And what he was doing. And when he said that, I, I, you know, I, I wasn't there scared. Or I didn't say, oh, why is this happening to me? Or, oh, it's the devil. No, I said, you know what? I told Satan when I had that vision. I told him the gang preacher is a true soldier for the king. I told my flesh stays under subjection under the king of kings and lord of lords. And ain't no one scared right here, Lucifer. I know who you are. And I'm calling you out. And I said, and not just that, even if I do die, I'm going to die preaching the gospel. My last breath will be preaching against your kingdom. Amen. And I remember when, 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 when I came out, when I woke up, I was laughing. I told my wife, the devil said he's going to kill me. And then the next day I was dying. All right? <laughs> But let me tell you, even when I, was, when I was up in the hospital dying, when she took me, they said if I wouldn't have went in two days, I would have died, right? And, and, and in there, I still, I still wasn't like, oh, why this happened to me? I said, you know what, God? If this is my last few days here on this earth, then let's do what I said. Let's preach this gospel up in here. Amen. Let's let this enemy know what, what it is for true soldiers to go out like. Amen. Not no little girls. <laughs> and I started preaching the gospel. We need soldiers like that nowadays. That know who they are in Christ and that ain't backing down and that ain't scared to preach truth. Amen. You know, it was so sad. I could see in there exactly what the enemy was doing too. There was so much fear. Everyone was scared. People were dying. And I could feel that. And I said, we're going to shift this atmosphere up in here for God's glory. Amen. We're going to preach this gospel and save some souls. Even if I do die. Right? And we have to be like that, family of God. We have to be the real deal now in these end times. This world is looking for something. They don't even know sometimes what they're looking for. But they're looking for truth. They're looking for truth from our king. And sometimes the only Jesus people are going to see is in you guys. But the sad thing is, is that us guys, not me, but a lot of believers ain't out here talking about it. You know what's so sad to me? People will come to church and go out of church, come into a building, look all cute and nice, right? And act like everything's all good and, and nothing's going wrong. And that they have everything together, uh -huh. right? Looking their best. Jealousy. Being fakes. Look, do you, want, do you want to be free? Or do you just want the picture of being free? Right. Come on. I see all these posts on Facebook, right? And, and people smiling this and that. And behind the scenes... They're, they're, they're in this, this ray. They're, they're, they're going to hell. The devil's attacking their lives. But everyone looks at them and says, oh, man, they got it together. Or they're in church looking good and being fakes. 
Oh, we don't have no problems. Everything's great all the time. We're blessed. Right? Really when the devil's attacking you and killing you inside. But, but we've made it so fake up in many churches that we can't be real anymore. We can't tell people, hey, we're having this problem. We're having that problem. Pray for me. In the majority of churches. That's a sad thing. The church was meant to be a hospital. And you know that, that the building in the Bible, when people say church buildings and this and that, oh, do you have this? You know, I don't make it about a building. I'm still a pastor to my gangs for Jesus, but I don't have a building. You know, and I'm not against buildings. I think while they're here, we should pack them, preach truth, and disciple people, soldier people up, and send them out to make converts of this world that's dying. Why are we just going to do stuff in here and not out there? The world's doing it. Lucifer's doing it. Drug dealers are making money. Porno stars are making money. They're known. Movie stars are blaspheming our God, making money. But then we're going to be up in here and, 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 and say, oh, no, we're not going to do that. But they're blaspheming our God out there? When are we going to stand up, fam? Huh? When are we going to rise? And not be the picture of, of, of being free. But be free indeed to preach the gospel. Amen? Amen. Look, it, it trips me out because sometimes I'll be in churches, right? And, and um, I'll see people go out. And it's so sad. Because I'll see sometimes prostitutes, gang members, homeless people. And the people go out and walk right next to them. You know, I, I think we need to ask ourselves, you know, that famous phrase, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Yeah. That's right. Because he wouldn't just walk by these people. That's right. That's right. The least you can do is say, hey, you know what? God loves you. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah. There's a Savior that loves you that can change your life. Something. Right. Yeah. But we ain't doing nothing. And we're not even good at it. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's sad, family of God. Yeah. You know, I, I had one of my... My guys for Jesus peeps, right, tell me, hey, pastor, we got to go hit the streets and keep up our appearances. And I was thinking, I was looking, I was like, oh, okay. And, and later on, a little bit later, I told her, it was a, a woman in our ministry, right? And I said, this is not something that I put on as an act or an outreach. This is a lifestyle for me. It doesn't matter where I'm at, I hit the streets. I always go to the streets, just like he was saying, Chris, from Broken Chains. And Brian, they're both with me. They're like, hey, you want to go hit the streets? And I'm like, Shh, let's do it. And they're like, for real? Yeah, for real. I'm talking about a gangster preacher, baby. Let's go hit these streets. <laughs> I went immediately because this should be a lifestyle. I was preaching at a church not too long ago, and I seen this, this um, like homeless camp through trees, right? Right next to a building. Everyone going in, everyone walking in. And, and I start walking away to go preach to the homeless people. And, and one of my, 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 the people in the Gangs for Jesus, right, was telling me, hey, where are you, where are you going, Gangs for Where are you going, Pastor, whatever? And I was, I was just walking. I didn't even answer them. I went immediately, and, hey, what's up, fam? They called me the Gangs Preacher. I got love for people like you. I understand where you come from. Why don't you guys come check me out? I'm going to preach today at this church. I'll hook you guys up with free books and sign them for you. And I was telling them, you know, they got a book out on my life, a, a documentary, they're going to be making a movie. And I said, so... You guys should come check me out. I love you guys. But how sad is it that there could be people right next to the buildings, yes. yeah. to churches, That's right. and we're not doing our job. Yeah. And we're not being free and free indeed. Like the Israelites, right? Yeah. Well, when, they were, when they were set free and, and set, you know, free from captivity from, from Egypt, and, and they had crossed the Red Sea, mm -hmm. and they were talking to Moses, grumbling instead of being happy. Saying, why are we out here? Why did you bring us out here to die? Yeah. And they said, we'd rather be in Egypt as slaves, eating food. We don't even have food here. They were free, but they weren't free indeed. When are we going to be free indeed, family of God, the church? Because that's what we do. Yes. Can we make y'all think? Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Like this everywhere, right? 
Quiet, pin drops. <laughs> but you guys need to hear it, fam. Right. Someone's got to right. preach truth. Yeah. Someone's got to be up here and be real and not be all religious. Yeah. Right? There's too many places that are, that are run by religion. Jesus wasn't a religious person. He was free and free indeed. He was a remnant from heaven. Yes. Sent here on this earth to show us and be real. And he was real, real. Yes. He was very unorthodox. Yes. Very unorthodox. But people followed him. Because they knew he was speaking truth. They knew he was a true soldier for the king. That he was the son of God. Not just him, but Paul, Peter, all the disciples. But they didn't start like that. They had to be real. Jesus had to see some flaws in them. For them to get to the point they got to. Until they died for this gospel. You know I, I tell people all the time. The places I come from. The prisons I've been in. Halfway houses. Restitution centers. You know county jails. Detention homes. All that stuff right. If, 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 if it's for God now. Then cool. If I'm in prison I'll preach like Paul. And if I die I'm going to heaven. So I win. Yeah. We got to be like that. Like apostle Paul's up in these end times. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So let's go back to this. It says, when our enemies had heard that we are aware of their plot and that God had frustrated it. That's another thing, right? God will frustrate your enemies. You know, the enemy thinks he's, he, he's, he's sharp. And he is, actually. Yep. Let me tell you something. The enemy is very, very slick. He, he just doesn't know your sins. He knows your whole bloodline sins from the beginning. So we have to stay on point. We have to stay sharp. We have to stay soldiered up. Or this enemy is going to eat us up and spit us out. We have to know who we are. Right? We all return to the wall, each to his own work. From that day on, half of my men did the work, while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows, and armor. The officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah who were building the wall. Those who carried materials did their work with one hand and held the weapon in the other. And each of the builders wore his sword by his side and worked. But the man who sounded the trumpet stayed with me. You need some people by you that are going to sound the trumpet when the enemy's coming. That are going to alert you. That, that actually can, can hear from the voice of God, like I said, spiritually. Right? Their ears are spiritually inclined unto heaven. It says, then I said to the nobles... And the officials and the rest of the people, the work is extensive and spread out. And we are widely separated from each other along the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. Our God will fight for us. Amen. 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 Go to Nehemiah 5. And I'm going to go to a few verses. Again, I, I, I encourage you guys to read this. It's really amazing. You know what I do when I read the Bible? Because a lot of people say, oh man, the Bible's boring or this and that. I kind of read it like it's a documentary. You know how they have documentaries? Because it's truth yeah. and it's stories. And, and I read it, I'm like, man, this is amazing, right? Amen. In verse 6, it says, When I heard their outcry and these charges, I was very angry. I pondered them in my mind and then accused the nobles and officials. Let me tell you something, family of God. When we see injustice, when we see, um, you know, people being, you know, mistreated, or, or, or like I'm saying, homeless or prostitutes or gang members or people that are lost, it should agitate something inside of you. Do you guys remember the story when, when the, the psychic was following Paul and she followed him out of the city? And, and, and Paul was, was going about his business and, and she was saying, these are men of God. These are men of God. And really what she was, it was a demon inside of her, it said. Following Paul. And Paul finally got agitated, it says in his spirit, and said, come out in the name of Jesus. And the demon came out. Right? Yeah. Same with Jesus. It says sometimes that his spirit will be agitated. Where is that happening in the church nowadays? Where is our, our, our spirit being moved? Challenged to do something great for the king. We've lost a lot of that family of God. We need to get it back. Amen. So in verse 9 it says, So I continued, what, do you do, what you're doing is not right. Shouldn't you walk in fear of our God to avoid the reproach of our Gentile enemies? I and my brothers and men are also lending the people money and grain. So check this out. So not only are these people fighting with one hand, their sword in the other, but they're also lending people money that need help. How many of us do that nowadays in churches? 
A lot of times, even if someone comes up to us and says, hey, can you give me five bucks for gas or a McDonald's meal? You'll say no. Oh, no, I'll pray for you, brother. Bro, their stomach's hurting. They don't need prayer. They need a meal up in their stomach. They might be able to hear you clearer and, and hear the gospel clearer if you feed them a little something. But instead of us doing that, we're like, oh, no, we start judging them right away. Who are you to judge? Who are we to judge? Only the king judges and is going to judge on judgment day. And on that day, I'm preaching this to you guys because you guys are going to answer to the king, to God, right. one day for what you do with what truth comes into your life. That's right. How are you going to answer the king? And let me tell you something. You can't blame me on your wife. You can't blame me on someone else. It doesn't matter what anyone else does. What are you doing That's right. That's right. That's right. for the king? Right? Yeah. In verse 9 it says, Remember me with favor, oh my God, for all I have done for these people. I, I say that a lot. Remember me, God, with favor for what we're doing. Because not many are doing what we're doing, what the gangs for Jesus are doing. And it's sad. I, I don't understand it. I don't understand how we could be so complacent. And not have faith like that. We have faith for everything else, right? But why not to do things like that? Why not to save a lost soul? Why not to help someone in need? Why not to preach to the poor? People tell me that all the time, family of God. Oh, well, I didn't live like you. Okay. But did the disciples live like me? No. They were fishermen. But they died for this gospel right here. It's true. Yes. Nehemiah 6, 2 to 5. I'm almost done, fam. I'm going to give you a little bit more. Yeah. Check this out. It says, but they were scheming to harm me. So I sent messengers to them with this reply. I am carrying on a great project and cannot go down. Why should, why should the work of the Lord stop or stop me while I leave and go down to you? Four times they sent me the same message. Each time I gave them the same answer. Then the fifth time. Amen. Now in verse 10 it says, One day I went up to the house of Shemaiah, son of Deliah, and the son of Methabel, who was shut in at his home. He said, Let us meet in the house of God inside the temple, and let us close the temple doors, because men are coming to kill you. By night they are coming to kill you. But I said, Should a man like me run away? Or should one like me go into a temple to save his life? I will not go. Look at the difference of, of, of people in the Bible compared to how we are. How the majority of the churches, the majority of believers, we've become a weak church. A church that is asleep. A church that ain't moving mountains anymore. A church that ain't doing things like these. That aren't letting people see greatness in us. They're running to the world for it. And the world's giving it to them. And they're dying in big numbers and going to hell at rapid rates. Amen. Right? I realized that God had not sent him. And that he had prophesied against me because Tobiah and the Sambal had hired him. He had been hired to intimidate me so that I would commit a sin by doing this. And they would give me a bad name to discredit me. There's people out here, fam, and even in the church. Like what he's saying here. These were ministers of the gospel that were coming to him. Prophets. You know, preachers, people like that, yeah. telling him all this stuff. And not everyone in the, in the house of God is for you. A lot of people want to mimic about you. A lot of people want to do stuff like that and put you down or hear your problems and then put you down. Be careful who you speak to. Be careful who you confide in. It should always be in your leadership. And your leadership should not go around, you know, talking behind your backs and, and blabbing your business either. Right? Right? says, remember to buy and stand by it, oh my God, because of what they have done. Remember also the prophetess, Noadiah, and the rest of the prophets who have been trying to intimidate me. Now check this out, fam. The completion of the wall. So this thing got built, right? And it says, so the wall was completed on the 25th of Elu. In 52 days when our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence. Because they realized that the work had been done with the help of God. Let me tell you something, family of God. 
When you're building and you're doing it for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and God's arms are in it, your, your arms are too short to box with our God. You can't fight God. You might be able to fight a man. You might be able to fight anyone else. But you can't fight the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You can't fight our God. Amen. He's too big. He's too mighty. He's controlling everything. And even though this devil thinks he's winning, he isn't winning nothing. Amen. And we need to step up and soldier up and go out here and be on fire for the King. And let these people know that there's still a God that loves them. And that's going to shift their lives for God's glory. Amen. And in 7, verse 1 and 2, it says, After the wall had been rebuilt, I set the doors in place. The gatekeepers and the singers and the Levites were appointed. I put in charge of Jerusalem my brother and I, along with Hananiah, the commander of Citadel, because he was a man of integrity and feared God than most men do. That's the type of people that we should have in leadership. That's the type of people we should have discipling people. It's people that fear God more than others do. And people that have integrity, right? I want to say this to you guys, fam. I wrote some little notes down. These are my little things, right? It's not even much. I just go off what God gives me. But we can't be a popcorn church anymore, right? That's what America's used to, popcorn church. Cute little seats, nice screens, lighting, restrooms, all this stuff. We can't be that no more. Obviously, this devil's attacking so hard that this world's getting crazy, fam. We have to step out and do something. We have to be the light of this world, like it says in the Bible, and the salt of this world. You know, in the word it says when you lose your salt, it's not even good for dung. Where's your salt at? How much salt do you have? Are you being the salt and light of this world? Or are you being the popcorn church? Are you just coming to church? You want a nice cute seat? Uh, you, we might as well give you a bucket of popcorn while you're here too. You're not going to be taking this serious or doing anything for God's kingdom, right? right. Popcorn church, man. That's what, that's what the Western world has become. Yes. You know, some places I preach, they're so hungry for God. In third world countries, they're so hungry. They run to the altar. They ain't ashamed of, of God. They want to be healed. They don't want to come somewhere and be a popcorn church and act like everything's all good. They want true change. When are we going to start standing for that and stepping up and wanting that for ourselves? Right? What about the people that are being murdered? Everywhere. Iran, right? Pakistan, China, Russia, all these places. Christians being murdered, martyred for their faith. And we're over here being the popcorn church? And you can't even go outside and, 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 and stop with a homeless dude or prostitute or gang member and say, Hey, Jesus loves you. Let me tell you, there's something that can change your life. Yeah. And then help them out once in a while, check, out, check in with them, help them bring them to the building while we still have them, and get them discipled and send them back out to save more souls. Right. People are dying for this right now, family of God. Yeah. And we're out here being the popcorn church. It's crazy. Let's go to one more. 1 Corinthians 4, 12 to 20. You guys enjoying it so far? Amen. Yeah. Amen. First Corinthians 4, 12 to 20. And I'm going to start reading. It says, we work hard with our own hands when we are cursed. We bless when we are persecuted. We endure it. When we are slandered, we answer kindly. Up to this moment, we have become the scum of the earth, the refuse of the world. Right? You know remnants? You know what remnants are? What it says in the Bible? It's like trash. It's like cut up cloth, clothing, and like trash, like rags. But God says in end times, he's going to raise a remnant up. And if you think about it, you know, because I think a lot since I preach, Jesus himself was a remnant from heaven to show us who we can be and show us the power that we can have. And let me tell you something, family of God. It's true power. There's true weight behind God's word. There's true power behind true soldiers. And we are that remnant. When are we going to rise? When are we going to take our place in God's kingdom? Right? Remnant. Other people might think we're trash. They might think we're nothing. But God is raising true soldiers up from the trash, from nothing, from the gutter. To, to you know, show the wise. Confound the wise, like it says in the Bible. To show them that God's using us too. Amen. 
Amen? Amen. I am not writing this to shame you, but to warn you as my dear children. Even though you have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. Amen. Imitate true men of God. See how they act. See how they move. See what they're doing. Imitate it. I used to do that. When I started walking with God, I would see people that I was like, wow, man, these guys are hard hitters for God. And I would see how they did things. I would see, you know, how they were moving, how they were walking in God. You know, they weren't going too ahead of God. They weren't behind him. They were walking with him and getting a lot of things done, many things done for the king, right? But you should see people like that and, and mimic them really, right? For this reason, I'm sending to you Timothy, my son, whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. He will, make, he will remain, remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in every church. We need people preaching that stuff, yeah. preaching real raw stuff, not stuff that's going to ear tickle people. That's right. you, know, you know what I've noticed? Jesus was so unorthodox, right? There's scriptures where he's like, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And I'm like, what the heck? You know what I mean? <laughs> I said, if I was there myself, I would be like, this dude's crazy. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> but like, again, he was unorthodox, but he was real. Yes, and people yeah. followed him. Remember the, the, the lady too? I was just talking about this there day with my uncle. But, but look, it, it, remember um, the lady that, that says, um, my, my daughter's sick or, or she has a demon in her. You know, please heal her. And he says, shall I give my, my, my food from my children to dogs? And she said, but Lord, even, even dogs get crumbs off the table. And then, and then Jesus healed her. Oh, would Jesus talk like this? He did. Yeah. It's in the word. That's why religious people didn't like him. He didn't have no board of directors. He didn't have no church. He didn't have no one telling him what to do or how to think or what, how to do it. He was the king. Yeah. And because he wasn't doing what they liked, they, 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 they wanted to kill him. Yeah. And they did. Come on, fam. We got to get on point, church. Some of you, I love this, right? I love this. Some of you have become arrogant. As if I were not coming to you. But I will come to you very soon if the Lord is willing. And then I will find out not only how these arrogant people are talking, but what power they have. Come on, family of God. That's how I feel. When I go places and I meet people and I do stuff, I'm always talking to them, asking them stuff. Seeing, seeing how grounded they are in God. Just checking them out. Just, just kind of like, okay, what, what's up with this? What's up with that when I meet people? Because a lot of people want me to meet their people places I go. And let me tell you something. It says here, some of you have become arrogant as if I were not coming to you. Soldiers that are true soldiers pack weight behind what they say and what they do. And we're going to see, like it says here, what power they have and, and how they're talking. We're going to test that because we are true soldiers and we want other people to be true soldiers in the kingdom of God. If you're saying you're a leader or you're in leadership or that you do big things or that you're a believer in Christ, then you should be acknowledging these words and doing them. Amen. Yeah. And like I said, have your spiritual ears open to hear from heaven. Right? And it says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk but of power. Amen. What kind of weight are you packing where you go? What kind of power do you have with what you're preaching, with what you're doing, the way that you're hitting areas or doing things for, for this kingdom on this earth? What's the power? Is there any power? Or are you, like I said, salt that's not even good for dung? Where's the power, family of God? We've lost that. We need to get it back. And that power comes from the King of kings and Lord of lords, from Jesus Christ. Amen? I'm done, fam. Look, I, I, I want to come out here to preach to you guys a little bit. I know you guys do like my little merch thing and all that, but that's not really what I come out for. That helps us travel and do what we do, right? But I came out here to get some souls saved, to set some people free. I didn't come out here to play games. To me, this is not a game. You know, last time, last time we came out to Montana, a, a few of my peeps were, I saw them like looking around, looking at things, and I said, hey, do that later. We're here for kingdom business. 
This ain't, this ain't a joke. This ain't a game. There's, there's principalities and powers out here that want to kill us. Yeah. Obviously, right? Last time I came out here, I almost died. So the devil ain't playing. We can't be playing either. Right. And I didn't come out here to play games. Amen. So if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you've never done that, or if you have, and you need to get back on track with God, I just want you guys to raise your hands up real quick. That's all I want. Just raise your hand. You don't even have to come up here. I see all you guys. That's good. That's good. I came for you guys. Amen? Amen. And let me tell you, you don't have to be ashamed of this gospel. That's right. Jesus wasn't ashamed when he died for you on that cross. That's right. You know when he died for you guys on that cross and that blood fell from the cross and hit the ground? It represented covenant from heaven to earth. And, and that blood is so powerful that it covers all your sins. It's like if you're sitting at a table and someone throws a, an apron around it and you're, and you're handicapped and you can't walk and you're in a wheelchair. No one will ever know because that, that tablecloth covers your, your legs. It's the same thing that, that God's blood does, but over every single thing in your life. Amen? Amen. So repeat this prayer after me. All you guys that raise your hand, I, I probably saw, I don't know, maybe 10, 15, something like that. So you guys just repeat this prayer after me. Let's all repeat it. Father, I thank you for dying for my sins. I thank you for hanging on the cross of Calvary and shedding your blood for me. I ask for forgiveness. And I accept you into my heart right now. I thank you for it, God. I'm going to live better now. I'm going to get on point more. And I'm going to be a soldier for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. It's that simple, fam. I love y'all. Wow. Thank you, Pastor Isaiah. Amen. Can we take you? Give him a hand. Thank you. I want to encourage you, okay, how many have you looked through social media and you see a picture of James Earl Jones or Morgan Freeman and there's a little blurb next to them? When you read the blurb, what do you do? You hear their voice, right? I tell you what, I read this book and it was, you could hear his voice the entire time through this book. It was phenomenal. And so I want to encourage you to get the book. This is a testimony of God reaching into some of the deepest, darkest, or worst places and, and saving and redeeming a soul. And if he can do it for a guy like Isaiah, he can do it for anyone. Amen? Amen. Come on. The great thing is, is I don't have his life. I think the devil has sold the biggest lie, which is that whole term, fake it till you make it, right? Yep. Just fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it when all we're called to do is just be real. All we're called to do is believe that word of God and believe it to be absolute truth and walk in it and stand on it. And then it doesn't matter. A brother like that and a brother like me and, and men and women like you, we all have what? The same message, and that is the gospel that Jesus loves us and he died for us and he can redeem us. Amen? Amen. So I just want to thank you so much for what you did and thank you for being here. You totally blessed this house. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's go before, yeah, give it up for God. We're going to go into, a, I'm going to close in prayer. We're going to go into a time of communion. And if you um, are a guest here and you're a believer, um, we have an open communion here at this church where if you're a believer, you're welcome to come forward and, and take the elements. This is a time for you to get right with the Lord. Amen. Amen. We don't want to rush this. These elements will be up here for, for a bit. And when the worship team comes up, we, we move them to the side. But do not feel like you got to get it or you're going to miss it. We will keep the elements out for the duration of this service. And so uh, take this time, listen to the word that was given. Look at your heart, examine your heart. Where do we align with what Pastor Isaiah shared in our walk with the Lord? You know, we're gonna go into a time of communion. And as I said, as you come forward, come over when you're ready. If you wanna kneel down and pray, kneel down and pray. If you wanna come up as we go into more worship, come up and give it all to the Lord. Leave it here. He's got, he's got heavenly vacuums that'll come in. They'll just clean up after this. You just leave the junk here. Amen? 
and just, just walk in the freedom that he talked about, you know? I love it. Not the picture of being free, but being free indeed. That'll change your life. I mean, it was so good. So we want to give glory to Father, and we want to thank him. But these elements, these represent the body and the blood, the broken body of Christ, the poured out blood that he spilt for all of us so that we could be with him in heaven. And so we don't take this time lightly here at church. This is a tolerant, it's, a, it's that bittersweet thing. We're, we're, it's, it's terrible that Christ had to die for us, but we're so glad that he did. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go before the Lord. Father God, we come before you. We thank you for the word that you brought. We thank you for, for your messenger and his wife, and they, they, we thank you for their safe travels. But Father, ultimately, we thank you for the message that they bring. They bring a message of hope and of salvation. God, we just thank you for that message, that it applies to all of us in, in every area of life, in all walks of life. Rich, poor, doesn't matter. You don't care. You look at the soul of the individual, and we are commanded to do the very same. Father God, to read, just, I mean, we could get so caught up in our own minds. One thing that struck me in this book is, is even as a hardened criminal, as this, this man's man in the, in the world of crime, when he laid his life down for you, he tried to read the Bible and couldn't understand it. And he explains about how, how he said, give me a kid's Bible. He was so thirsty for you that, that he wanted to read a kid's Bible to, to grasp your word and to, to grow in his faith and knowledge of you and to where he is now and he's walking now, reading names that most of us would trip over, Father God. Father, you were such a redemptive God. We thank you. We come before you. We lay our hearts bare. We ask your forgiveness for anything that we might have brought in here. And Lord, we'd leave them in our seat. We'll leave them at the stage. But we are going to leave those things in this house. If there's addiction, we're leaving it here and letting you clean up after us. If there's anger, if there's gossip, if there's slander, if there's drunkenness, whatever it is, Father God, that we say, you know what? We're, we're committed to your word. We're committed to this call. And we know that time is short. Whether it's your coming back or it's our time to come and see you, life is but a vapor and it is short and we have a mission to do. And so, Father, as we close out, we're thoughtful, we're mindful. Father, I, I know you've challenged many in here. I know I've been challenged. Father God, I know that, that there is a point where we look at ourselves in the mirror and we have the opportunity to, to turn away and forget, forget what we just saw. But Lord, I pray that we would stay for a bit. We'd study the mirror. We'd study the look in our eyes when we're lying to ourselves and say, see, I got it. There it is. I'm doing away with that. We would see the light in our eyes as we look into the mirror at ourselves when we see the truth of what you say about us speaking to us and how it lights up our spirit. We'd grab onto that and say, I'm holding that. That's truth. But God, that we would have the understanding of the magnitude of what the cross represented. Father, your son stepping down out of glory. Your son walking this earth. Your son being hated because he was so radical. Father, I pray that I could be hated for my faith and that the people would just judge me for my faith and that I, I would walk with that, that abandon of who cares, I'm doing it for the Lord. That I would care less about me and more about you and the work that you've called me to that, that I wouldn't care. I would speak when you moved me to speak and I would do when you moved me to do. Father God, you are so good. We love you, Lord, and we surrender these things to you. Father, I pray if anybody needs prayer, there will be prayer warriors that are going to be standing off to the side here. Come up and, and seek prayer. Let somebody stand in agreement with you. If you can't get up and, and come forward and get communion, raise your hand. We have ushers that will come to you. But Lord, as we enter this time of communion and more worship, we just pray that, that you would continue to minister to the hearts and minds of those that are in here and those that are watching online. And Father God, if you need prayer, if they need prayer, that they would have the courage to come up and say, be with me, pray with me, stand in agreement with me, and we would do so. Father, we love you, and we thank you for all you give us. Continue to bless us as we go about our way. In Jesus' mighty name, and the church said, amen. amen.
as we continue in worship, please feel free to go over to the side to pray, to come forward to pray at the edge of the stage here. Do not be ashamed. Do not be afraid. You will not be judged here this morning. Amen. Bring it before the Lord. Be healed this morning. Worship with us. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we want to know you more and more. We're hanging on every Speak to us, O oh Lord. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of living God. We want to know you more and more. We're hanging on every word. Cause when you speak, when you move, when you do what only you can do, it changes us. It changes what we see and what we seek. And when you come in the room, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see and what we see. You're changing everything. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of living God we're leaning into all you are each of you else can wait spirit of the living God spirit of the living God come now and breathe upon our hearts come now and have your way cause when you speak when you move when you do what only you can do it changes us, it changes what we see, and what we see, when you come in the room, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see, and what we see, you're changing everything.
sing it out. This morning, church, sing it out. Heal my heart. With a thousand tongues to lift one cry Then from north to south and east to 
feelings I hold fast to what is true if the cross brings transformation then I'll be crucified with you because death is just a doorway into resurrection life if I join you in your sufferings then I'll join you when you rise and when you return in glory with all the angels and the saints my heart will still be singing and my soul will be the same oh christ be magnified let his praise arise christ be magnified with me oh christ be magnified from the altar of my Let his praise arise, Christ be magnified in me, oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life, Christ be magnified in me. God, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for, for the word, for the message that you've laid upon Isaiah's heart, Father God. I know that, that that word rings true. Father, we need to do more. Time is short. Father God, we, we want to be soldiers in your kingdom. We want to be soldiers for you unashamedly. And Father, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I know that we can all do that. We don't have Isaiah's background, but we have our own. 
right? Some of us have been through abuse, painful abuse by our parents, the ones that are supposed to love us. Some of us have addictions this morning, drugs, alcohol, pornography. Some of us are serial gossipers this morning. Some of us have been delivered from any one of those things, amen? And this morning is the day to be delivered if you have not been. Give it to God this morning. Now, I'm not promising you're going to walk away with an easy life. We're not promised that, but I promise you this. Christ will be walking alongside of you, healing you every step of the way. He will not forsake you. He will continue to walk with you. Yeah, you might stumble once in a while, but he's still walking with you. Give it to him this morning, and he will take it from you. And it might be today, and it might be next week, it might be five years from now, but I promise you, you've got to walk with him so that he can show you what he's doing inside of you. He can show you how he's healing you and what your testimony is. Because that's really what today is all about. Isaiah is saying, you need to use your testimony, your background, whatever it is. You need to go into your workplace, and you need to give that testimony, right, to the people that you work with. Kids, you need to go into school. Be unashamed. Your God loves you. He wants to love your friends. They just haven't heard about him yet because you haven't talked about him. And Father, give us the courage as we drive by those people with those signs outside of Walmart saying, I'm hungry. Father God, that we might not drive by, but we might turn around and park and go talk. That we might feed and fill a belly but, Father, that we also might feed and fill a soul this morning. Father, I love you. I thank you so much for what you've done for me. Father, God, forgive me where I've, I've fallen short. I know you do, Father, and I know that your mercies are new every day. And Father, I'm excited. I'm excited for this next week because we pray this morning that everybody in here has the opportunity now. We pray this next week that everybody has the opportunity to see at least one person that they need to share their testimony with and be a light into the darkness. And Father God, I know that that is a prayer that you want to answer. So as we pray that this morning, give us the courage, build us up, prepare us, Father, lay those words in our heart so that this week we can truly deliver. And Father, I, I know that you're there with us. We don't always have to have the answers to every single question, Father. We just need to show your love, talk about your grace and your mercy. Father, once again, we just ask that you be with those that are online this morning, so many that are home this morning that are, that are not feeling well, fighting COVID. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask for healing for our brothers and sisters. Bring them back to us safely. May you be glorified this week. May you be magnified in our lives this week. Father, for those who have maybe accepted you for the first time today, praise God. Man. I'm excited, Father, to see the work that you're about to do in their life. And for those who have recommitted today, Father God, praise God, I'm excited to see the work that you're doing in their lives. Congregation, don't leave this morning. If you've, if you've accepted Christ, don't leave this morning without talking to somebody. You need to tell somebody that you did that, that you made a decision today. It's important do that. We want to continue to pray with you. We want to follow alongside of you. We want to be your brother and sister in Christ to help hold you accountable where you need help. Pray for you where you need help. We are a church that wants to do that with you. Do not be ashamed. Do not be afraid. Father God, to you be all the glory. In the name of Jesus, the church said, amen. Chuck, you've got something. Yeah. Can we thank... Uh Give a hand to Pastor Isaiah again real quick. I overlooked uh, earlier on that we are going to be taking a love offering. If uh, We're going to take either cash or check. Um, if you don't have anything with you not today, but you want to support their ministry, um, Evelyn will have opportunity or information that you can sow into that ministry um, if, if you don't do it today. But if you do give by either cash or check today, Please write on one of the envelopes, either in front of the chairs or at the table, 
gangster preacher, and we will make sure that 100% of that gets to uh, Pastor Isaiah and Evelyn. So thank you all for being here. I would be remiss to say, I know we got a lot of visitors, but if you don't have a home church, uh, we would love to have this home, uh, this house be your home. Amen? Amen. Amen. Have a great week.